999. Which service do you require? Uh, there's been a really bad crash and there's lots of people hurt. Okay. Transferring to the ambulance service. Okay, operator. Call uh, what's the address of the emergency, please? It's uh, by the junction of Park Road and Harrington Way. Okay, thank you. Okay, tell me exactly what's happened. A bus has hit some cars and it's tipped over. In any incident, the process of information gathering is vital so that responders can be provided with the most relevant and accurate detail available. Well, I'm organising help for you now. If you just stay on the line, I'll tell you exactly what to do next. Yes, okay. Charlie, mate, officer, clear Officer 606, Charlie, mate, that's all. Over. We've had a 999 call receiving a report of a road traffic collision. Okay, and whereabouts is the road traffic collision? It's on the junction. The initial information from the 999 call is shared in a consistent, coordinated manner with other responder agencies, who can then mobilise the appropriate resources. Can I ask you to start making an emergency response? Harrington Way, junction of Park Road. Is it Grade 1? Yes, yes. Mike one nine, Papa one, RTC. This accurate recording and transmission of the information will begin to provide first responders with situational awareness and assist them in making informed decisions as they arrive on scene. Are you injured? No. Who is it you're on the phone to? OK, if you could just come off the phone, I'll need to... As the first responders arrive at the incident, they begin to assess the situation using what they can see to create a methane message, using plain English with no acronyms or service-specific jargon. A Jessup aid memoir and mobile app are available to support personnel when required. Tango X-ray 2-1. Yeah, if you just keep the channel clear, I am declaring this a major incident. The exact location is the junction of Park Road and Harrington Way. The type of incident, it's a road traffic collision involving a bus, a van and two vehicles. The hazards are there is smoke coming from the vehicles. There is fluid in the road. The road is congested, it is blocked. Please help over here. Are you okay? I'm fine, it's him, he's hurt his if chest. You just wait with him, someone will be here to help you in a second. Oh, okay, please. thank you. Yeah, access is going to be via Nelson Way. The number of casualties, approximately five or six walking wounded, numerous trapped in vehicles, and approximately 10 trapped on the overturned bus. I can't make out their injuries. Could I request the fire service, the ambulance service, and further police patrols to assist with the scene? Are you okay? Using methane provides a quick and efficient way of reporting, ensuring all the available and relevant information can be forwarded to other emergency service control rooms in a clear and consistent way. From a controls perspective, just is important because um, it does give a structured um, approach to the way that they work on the incident ground and also through the methane messaging procedure. It gives us a full understanding of what's actually happening out there. Hello Ambulance, it's, uh, police can confirm that a major incident has been declared. Police control now contact the other emergency services, updating them using the methane report yes. to provide a fast and accurate picture of the incident. Mike 19 Pat 1, further information from police. Just one bus, two cars and a van involved. With 10 to 15 casualties currently. Limited access to the scene. Ensuring that the information being shared is consistent provides a more accurate and detailed picture across all responding agencies, helping to build shared situational awareness and ensuring an appropriate response. Yes, message received control, proceed to incident. Because of the wide variety of incidents that we all respond to, ourselves, fire and rescue and ambulance, you've got to have a process that helps us all work together. Jessup training gives all the responders the same information. So at the start of an incident, everybody is already versed in the same information. Bravo X-ray 1969, receiving over. Charlie Mike to Operational Commander, you're mobilising to reports of a road trip. As the first responders are on their way, Operational Commanders will be notified of the incident and will mobilise to the scene. North EC. Cheers, thank you, bye. More emergency responders arrive to what has now been declared a major incident. 
Guys, what we've got is a six vehicle road traffic collision. There's a bus turned over onto its From the first responders on scene, someone will take initial command, assess the situation with other agency personnel, and together make immediate tactical decisions accordingly. Can I confirm we have a sterile access and egress route for our vehicles? I've got two officers on Nelson Way. They've got a blockage in there for you, so you have got that. OK, thank you. OK, great. We just need to agree who's going to take the lead for the coordination of this incident. I think it should be the fire service. I'm happy with that. OK, I agree with it as well. We use this here as our forward command post. Be back in 15 minutes. OK. OK. The commanders have now agreed which service will lead the coordination. They have identified their priorities and set further meetings. Personnel from each service are working together to achieve the same operational goals. And commanders continue to liaise with each other in this dynamic and changing environment. The Jessup principles mean that we talk the same language, behave the same ways, and that just really helps us make uh, an effective contribution to incidents. As a Category 2 responder at Manchester Airport, working alongside our Category 1 responders, it's vitally important that we understand how they work and how they operate. It's critical that we all work together so that we're all uh, working along the same principles and all understand um, the risk. We are able to go to strategic and tactical coordinating groups and understand far better now exactly how uh, heads of those fora uh, approach disruptive challenges and we can make uh, a more effective uh, input as a result. Arriving on scene, operational commanders will seek out their respective initial commanders. And the traffic management. OK, I'll take over at this point, Dan. If you can go and set the commander for me and manage the execution of the incident, please. Will do. As further operational commanders arrive, they will co-locate with each other at an agreed forward command post. They will be identifiable by the wearing of specific tabards. Having confirmed with each other that this has been declared a major incident, commanders will utilize the Joint Decision Model, or JDM, a five-stage process which continues throughout the duration of the incident. Using the JDM helps bring together all the available information reconcile any potential differing in priorities and enable effective decisions to be made. You've given us an update on the uh, information and intelligence that we currently have. In gathering information and intelligence from all relevant and available sources, commanders and other personnel should use plain English with no acronyms or jargon. From our perspective, really, we've, uh, we've got paramedics working on the scene in the cars at the moment. But obviously... They will use this information to coordinate by agreeing the lead agency, identify priorities, resources, capabilities and limitations in planning an effective response. Clearly, uh, it's a fire scene currently. I think right now we probably uh, would look at uh, a police lead on this to ensure overall coordination. It gives you the space now to get on with the actual rescue. Um, would you be in agreement with us? Steve? Yes, I would. Yeah, we'll deploy. Sir. Commanders will then assess risks and develop a working strategy. This gives them a common understanding of the threats and hazards ahead allowing informed decisions on deployment and risk control measures to be made. Uh, looking at our overall uh, risks and threats in this, uh, from your perspective, what have you got? The risk at the moment is the stability of the courts. We have got serious millions of people in there, so we need the stability of the courts really. Yeah. I'll keep away from the stability now. Can we just put the stab fast in place? Sorry, you just have to explain that for me. Do you use, use plain English on that one? OK, it's a, it's a method of stabilising the vehicle that we use. The command team will also need to ascertain what legal powers and relevant policies and procedures are applicable to this particular situation. Situation. Uh, clearly, from my perspective, that is the number one priority, Article 2, yep. save life. Uh, but yeah, it is a crime scene and where possible, people need to be forensically aware around this. Is GB in agreement yeah, with that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Having assessed the risks and established the appropriate procedures, they will develop a range of options and contingencies to resolve the incident. In jointly agreeing on what the most appropriate option is, the commanders take a collective action, utilising their relevant resources. The primary aim of all decision-making must be to save lives and reduce harm. As the incident continues, commanders' shared situational awareness will be constantly updated via METHAN. Steve, when I first uh, got my briefing, it was 10 to 15 casualties. Uh, have you got a further update on that? Yeah, we've done a further three hours. We've got three trap patients in various vehicles, 10 on the bus. Ten on the bus. New information or changes will be updated through a revised methane report and shared via control centres to ensure a current and relevant level of shared situational awareness amongst responder agencies. 
the principles help. Um, it gives us a formalised structure to work together. So we all know um, to co-locate, to coordinate, to communicate. We've all got a joint understanding of risk. Uh, and then we've, because we've got all that and we're all together, we've got that shared situational awareness. The application of the principles for joint working will often but not always be followed in the order in which they are presented. In the initial phases of an incident, the joint decision model may be used to structure a briefing. However, as incidents develop and become protracted, a handover between commanders and responders may be required. In such instances, a more detailed briefing tool should be used. The II March model has the flexibility to be utilised in multi or single agency briefings, depending on the situation. Going with this multi vehicle RTC, uh, in terms of the information, we've got um, three patients that are trapped uh, currently in various vehicles, 10 patients on the. Uh, our intention here is to. Uh, minimise the risk to the casualties and to maximise the safety of response. Uh, the method obviously we've got a safe working environment and we're prioritising the execution of casualties and the stabilisation of the vehicles. Uh, in terms of administration, make sure you complete your patient report forms, okay? Uh, and make sure you, you keep the triage. Uh, risk assessments, obviously, we've got glass to manage and we've got the stability of the vehicle as a priority. We've also got bodily We've fluid. got our communication set up now on our talk group, which you will already be on, and I've heard you talk uh, test call on that. And in terms of humanitarian issues, I think really it's just dignity of patients when we're getting them off the bus. Again, the walking wounded, if we can, just if they've got any issues, they may well have after. Breaking glass! Hello, mate. Hello. My name's Paul. I'm from the heart team. OK, we're going to look after you. Each agency integrates the agreed working strategy into their ongoing activities. Based on a full understanding of the situation and the risks involved, they are able to work towards resolving the incident safely and successfully. By applying JESSIT principles, emergency services work together more effectively, helping to save lives and reduce harm. Oh guys, you okay? Uh, I can confirm now, we've removed the last patient from Sing to hospital, so I'm going to stand down some resources. It's probably worthwhile, I think, if we have a hot debrief uh, yeah. in about five minutes with the relevant staff and commanders. Yeah. Say at the back of the ambulance over there in five minutes, yeah. is that okay? okay. Yeah. Right. okay thanks. Right. So we continue to learn by um, working together, exercising, training, uh, and then debriefing. So hot debrief, structured debriefs with multi-agency partners. It's not about who's right and who's wrong, it's about what we can learn from where we've been, and that's really, really important. First of all, is it everybody safe and well, all our staff, yes. no near yeah. misses, yeah. nothing yeah. to report. From a, from a the hot debrief provides an opportunity to discuss any immediate lessons that have arisen from how all responder agencies jointly dealt with the incident. This is pretty clear. Yes. yes. Yeah. OK, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to thank you very much for attending this multi-agency debrief today. And this is on the back of a major incident that was declared uh, for a road traffic collision uh, last week on the junction of uh, Park Road and Harrington Way. Post-incident, a formal debrief will occur. This will involve the attending commanders, other relevant personnel and agency staff. This is an opportunity to look at how Jessup principles were applied what worked well and what could be improved upon in the future. The first in attendance that I'm aware of was the Fire and Rescue Service as an operational commander. So Fire and Rescue Service, if you any areas of notable practice or lessons uh, to discuss during the debrief around how we co-located that scene. It worked well because the initial incident commander and myself had the tabards on so it was easily identifiable and then we had the blue light. This collaborative multi-agency discussion helps ensure that the lessons identified are noted and shared in a consistent way so that we have the opportunity to learn from them and continually improve our response to incidents. I'd just like to emphasise the importance of capturing lessons and notable practice from this incident and we'll take them away to our multi-agency forum and we'll discuss what areas we've identified today and what notable practice we've identified today and we'll make sure they go onto the national database which is of course JOL Online. We can continually learn by uh, fully debriefing any incidents or exercises that have taken place uh, and any learning outcomes can then be put into JOL Online for other emergency services around the country to learn from. It's intended for us to put information on and share it with our partner agencies you know, get in there with, with what we're doing and doing it better and doing it differently if need be. And it's really important for, for agencies, I think, to get involved in that uh, and to look at the information there. The Joint Organisational Learning System is available to all responder agencies and hosted on a government platform, Resilience Direct, which is a secure system. 
local arrangements should be in place to ensure interoperability lessons are recorded, reviewed and shared in a multi-agency environment. Only by working together and learning together can we ensure that in any future incident we can all help to save lives and reduce harm. Just it's extremely important um, to work with multi-agency partners to ensure we're providing the best service to the public. Jessup allows us to deliver effect very quickly, ultimately in order to save lives uh, and alleviate the situation. Going forward, it's vital that the services continue to embrace Jessup, embed it into business as usual practice, and share lessons nationally so that everyone can improve their response. We've all got a duty of care and when we use Jessup we've got a common goal, a shared situational awareness and a common understanding.